Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet this morning as we get ready to worship the Lord. As we get ready to give him honor, as we get ready to give him praise this morning. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. We, he's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to remind us of our passion for Christ. Hallelujah. I want you to ask yourself this morning, where is my passion for Christ? Hallelujah. Where is my passion for Christ? In the book of Joel, the meaning of his name is Yahweh is God. But how many of us know or even remember that Yahweh is a covenant-keeping God? Hallelujah. Joel was God's spokesman. Don't know if you know what that means. It means it's, he spoke on behalf of the Lord. It means everywhere that he went, the passion for Christ was heard in and through Joel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare that the passion of Christ would arise in us this morning. Arise in us this morning. For those of you who are asleep, those of you who are in slumber, I pray that the passion of Christ would arise this morning. Just raise your hands up to the Father and just ask him to restore my passion. Restore my passion for you, Christ Jesus. The way that you love me, God. Allow me, Lord God, to have the same passion for you. Despite my circumstances, despite my situation, despite me being unable to pay my bill, despite my back in pain, despite that my knee hurts, despite that I've been diagnosed with an illness, God, I will continue to have passion for you. I will press in for you, Christ Jesus. My passion for you, O oh God. I cry out to you today to restore my passion, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 In Joel 13, it says, rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. And he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain. In the first month, the threshing floors shall be full of wheat. The vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has stolen. Come on, people. Listen to the God that you serve. He is a restorer. How many of you can look at your lives right now? It might not seem that way today. It might not seem that way yesterday. But he's a faithful father. Declare that you have a passion for Christ. The person beside you. When Jesus was here on this earth. Hallelujah. He wasn't selfish. Hallelujah. It wasn't about himself. It was about the people he came in contact with. We serve a covenant-keeping God. So I want you to pray for your brother beside you. Pray for your sisters beside you. Any person that your eye catches this morning. Hallelujah. Press in. Press in for the passion of Christ. Hallelujah. He said, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Come on, people. Come on. We don't need the worshipers to start this morning. We don't need the worshipers to wake us up this morning. The Lord woke us up this morning. Our eyes were open. We breathe his breath this morning. Press in. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. Worship the Lord from the bottom of your belly. Worship God. Hallelujah. That is what you're here for this morning. It's not always about what God can give you. What are you giving God today? What are you putting at the throne of grace and mercy today? Have you come with a surrendered heart? Have you come with a surrendered soul? Have you come with all that you have? Are you saying, I don't have anything 
else, God, but a praise this morning. I don't have any tithe or offering to give, but I do have a praise this morning. I do have a prayer this morning. Hallelujah. For those of you who are listening online, who are unable to come into the sanctuary today, if you're still in bed because you're not feeling well, you can still praise the Lord. You can still have a passion for Christ. Where is your passion for the Lord? Ask the Lord if you can't find it to restore it because he is a restorer. So we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing and what you're about to do, O oh Lord. We thank you that we have an open heaven this morning, O oh God. And we can worship you. We can adore you, God, because you're a covenant-keeping God. Every word that is written in this book, hallelujah, hallelujah, shall come forth, shall come to pass. We declare it so, God, because you have already said it is yes and it is amen. It is yes, and it is amen, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What an honor it is to be here this morning, hallelujah, just worshiping our King. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're joyful this morning. Hallelujah. Good. 
it out with us this morning. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you from who you are people from every nation and tongues from generation to generation we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are you are good You are good all the time, all the time. Say, you are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, say it, you are good, all the time, all the time, you are good. If you think that to you, you let's sing Jesus. You are good, you are good, you are good, all the time, and all the time, you are good, you are good for yesterday, for tomorrow. For every day, you are, you are good. good, you are good, you are good, all the time, all the time, you are good, you are good, all the time, all the time, you are good, we worship you, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you.
be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations you are worthy lord people from every nation and tongue be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations you are worthy lord we give you upon the praises of a thousand generations you are worthy Lord of all and unto you the slain and risen we lift our voice with heaven singing worthy are you Lord we'll be enthroned upon a thousand generations, you are worthy, Lord of all. And unto you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice with heaven, singing worthy, Lord of all.
like lift our hands up it actually changes our emotions it does something to our body like we're lifting our hands up come on we lift our hands in the sanctuary God strong tower the name of the Lord is my hiding place the name of the Lord come on sing it until you believe it the name of the Lord is my strong tower the name of the Lord is my hiding place the name of the Lord goes before me the name of the Lord comes behind me the name of the Lord is my strong there's power in his name the name of the Lord goes before me the name of the Lord comes behind me the name of the Lord is my strong tower the name of the Lord is my hiding place the name of the Lord goes before me the name of the come on we're gonna keep repeating this until we get it the name of the Lord is my strong tower the name of the Lord come on there's power in his name the Lord goes before me the name of the Lord comes behind me the name of the Lord is my strong tower. The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord comes before me. The name of the Lord comes behind me. The name of the Lord is my strong tower. The name of the Lord is my hiding place. The name of the Lord before me. The name of the Lord goes behind me. The name of the Lord is my the Lord is my hiding place. The name of the Lord goes before me. The name of the Lord comes behind me. The name of the Lord is my strong tower. The name of the Lord is my hiding place. The name of the Lord goes before me. The name of the Lord. And we declare. And we declare the name of the Lord. We declare the name of the Lord. Shine, shine, shine. 
the end. 
Oh, oh. 
So come on, let's respond to the worship, okay? Because I'm going to tell you, yeah, let's respond. We respond. We respond to you, Holy Spirit. We honor you in this house. We lift you up in this house. Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, come on us. Refresh us. Renew us. Wake us up. Wake us up. I hear the Holy Spirit say, it's time to wake up. So if you came into the house today and you, maybe you didn't want to come this morning. Maybe you were tired. You were tired. My husband and I, we were tired this morning. But we decided we needed to come. <laughs> so now, now that you're here, I want you to respond. In fact, I challenge you, I'm gonna challenge this house to respond to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you this morning. He's saying something different. The Spirit of God is saying something different to each one of you. So I want us to just be quiet for one minute just a minute and let's hear what he's saying to us we need to practice this let's practice hearing practicing the presence of God in my life. And I feel like when we come here, like all the wires get plugged in. Everything gets plugged in. That's why the church is so important. That's why worship is so important. Because the Spirit of God is plugging in all your wires. Allow Him to do that today. Allow Him to do that. Because you're going to need that Spirit to follow you out of this building And speak to you about how to live your everyday life, about how to be powerful in the spirit, about how to live your life in a uh, overcoming way. I hear the Lord saying to some of you in this house that you need to overcome. Today is the day to overcome and not to be overwhelmed by your, what's happening in your life, by your marriage or your children. Don't be overwhelmed by the world and Instagram and Twitter and whatever else it is you can make connections to every day. And you know you make connections to the world because if you're on those things, there's connections that are happening. Some of you need to unplug. Some of you need to unplug from those, from those voices and from even news. Even news freaks me out sometimes. Like we have to unplug from the television. We have to pl unplug from Netflix. We have to unplug from other sources that are not of God. Literally, they're literally not of God. Literally not of God. So let Holy Spirit speak to you this morning about things you need to disconnect from. And, and I'm telling you, come to church. Come to the house. Because if this didn't move you this morning, nothing will. Like nothing will. Nothing will. We need worship. I need to make worship a part of my life. I need to be a, in, this, in this room when th the worship is going on. When we are talking about the name of I am, which is the highest name above all names. It's the highest name. It's the first name that was in the scriptures, quoted in the scriptures. When we say that name, like something, as Christy said it, something happens to you. Something happens inside of you, in your guts, in your heart, in your mind. Something happens to you when you are a part of what's happening here in the spirit, just in the spirit. 
just in the spirit. So let's just lift our hands up and just thank the Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this house. I thank you for this house. I thank you for Kingsgate. I thank you for this building. I thank you for the parking lot. I thank you, oh God, for a place that is out of the way, but is going to be noticed one day. And God, you're going to do great and mighty things in this house. We have been saying this for years, but this is, uh, this is the year of the open door. The door is opening up to us this year so that we can walk through and, and be a part of the harvest be a part of what you've called us to do in this region, oh God, and in this house, oh God. We believe, Lord. Come on, believe with me. Believe with me that the doors are open. Believe with me in the spirit realm that doors are going to be open to us as a house and open to you and your family. We believe it, oh God. We hold on to it. We lumbano the, the open doors that are going to come into our life this year. The things you have planned for us, for the houses all across this region, for resting place, for all the people, oh God, that are crying out, the remnant that is still crying out to you, oh God. We believe, we believe, oh God, that this is our year. Okay? Now, if you don't believe it, and if you don't ask for God to do that or open doors for you, it's not going to happen. Because God wants us to qualify to be the men and the women who are leading who are leading and walking through the doors. Okay, God, we thank you. We thank you for this time of worship. We thank you for this time. We're going to hear a good word today. We're going to hear a good word today. We thank you. That's like, that's like bread and, and water and life to us, oh God. And we thank you for pastor. We thank you for every word that he has uh, studied for and, and is presents to us and gives to us, God. We thank you for that food, and we thank you for fellowship. We bless our fellowship in this house today in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I'm sorry sometimes I go on too long, I know. But when I come into this house, something happens to me. It happens to me. Like, it, it, like I get plugged into what the Holy Spirit is saying, plugged in, more than any other place that I go. So, so I just bless you guys this morning. I think there are some people who are here for the first time. If you're here for the first time, would you wave your hand at me? You're here for the first time? You're here for the second, third time? But come on up, because we're going to pray for you. Anybody, anybody else? <laughs> we're going to pray for him anyway. Yeah. Oh, you were going to pray for him? Okay, come on up. <clears throat> Tell everybody who you are. Well, my name is Mazen. Uh, most of you know who I am. I go to rest in place. Um, I'm also for the from the land where Jesus was born. I come from a Palestinian Christian background. And um, when I first came here this morning, I was so blessed. I had a good fellowship with a brother. And I felt like on fire. I'm sorry. What did you say? Your home. Your home. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Most definitely. Okay. Most definitely. So I this morning I came in and I had a great fellowship with a brother. I was on fire for the Lord. And a lot of people in this church really greeted me uh, with uh, beautiful love. And I'm so blessed to be here. And he said, this is my home church. And I said this morning, I was talking to a brother. I said, I want to make this church to be my home church. <laughs> I just want to be, uh, I just want to be used. I want to be a servant of God. I, just please pray for me. I, 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 I go through so many situations and so many battles in my life because I'm, I don't know, I, I, I guess... I'm a Palestinian that God has a strong calling on my life and, and to, to, to preach to the Jews and to preach to the Palestinians. So pray for me, please, a lot. Thank you and God bless you and I love you in Jesus' name. Whoa, whoa, don't, don't. Um, <laughs> Mazen is a real, like, special person because he is a Palestinian and uh, he works with other Palestinians and he works with Muslims. And he's a Christian man, full of the Holy Spirit. And also, he tells everybody he loves Jewish people. He's not supposed to. He's supposed to hate them as a Palestinian. But he loves them. And of course, 
he gets a, a strange eye from Jewish community and he gets another strange look from the Palestinian and the Arab community. But I tell you what, when Jesus looks at him, <laughs> Jesus says, you are my good and you are my faithful servant. And so, let, uh, come on, let's all stand. I knew he was coming today and I felt that we should pray, not only for Mazen, but he has family in Palestine, in the Palestinian territory. He has family there and I'm sure that they're not having a good time. And so, can we pray today? Uh, can we pray for God's protection, God's will, for not only for Mazen, for his family, and for the children, and for the, for the women, and for the, the ones that are suffering right now. There's a lot of suffering right now. A lot of suffering. Starving, no water, no food, no shelter. And so, um, let, let's pray. Let's pray. We can pray for for the needy, we can pray for the suffering. We can pray for the ones that um, are, are, are in trouble today. Um, and so Holy Spirit, now we, hold, we, we, we take Mazen as, a, as our brother. He is our brother. And we take Mazen as a prayer point, as a contact point to pray for the Palestinian people. Yes. Oh God, oh God, they have promises. There's promises for them. Oh God, the gospel is being preached in Palestinian territory. There are churches, there are Christians, there are men and women that are open, there are men and women that are having dreams and visions. And so Holy Spirit, blanket that land with your peace and with your presence and with your grace, blanket that peace. We pray for the children, we pray for the ones that are hurt and wounded. We pray for the mothers that are holding babies. We pray for the men that are, are looking for food for their children. We pray for them. Holy Spirit, help them. And we pray, Lord, for men that make the big decisions. Holy Spirit, break through their hearts. Break through their hearts. Break through their hearts. So they might see the people that are suffering. They might not see their religion or their political agendas. Holy Spirit, we declare the peace of God. We declare the peace of God over Mazen and his family. We declare the peace of God over our hearts. We declare the peace of God over the land of Israel. We de declare the peace of God over the whole Palestinian territory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen. And amen. Now listen. Listen. When you see Mazen at the end of the service, um, when you greet them, greet him and you hug him, you're hugging the Palestinian people. That's what you're doing. And you're blessing them. Amen? And so hug him and kiss him and bless him. Yeah? And, um, and, and, and tell him that, that you love him and that you, you're praying for his people. Amen? God bless you, everybody. So we're going to, um, wow. <clears throat> if you <laughs> if you were um, if you were in resting place and if you were in, in our church in um, 86 Lackawanna yeah well you um, you walked you walked on Mazen's handiwork because Mazen is the best uh, listen no exaggeration the best carpet installer engineer no i'm serious no 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 i'm serious he's the best i've ever seen and uh and he installed all the carpeting the even casino the, carpet. the casino carpet <laughs> right yeah, they, i remember that Mazen, that color yes and uh he made miracles because he he cut them and he put them together pieces so we bless Mazen and uh we walked on your handiwork <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. And if you need any, if you need, <laughs> if you need any carpet, he's the man. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Um, but the Lord didn't forget about that. Um, wow. So good to be here today. 
I'm like so happy to be here. I am, I feel transformed. I feel the change in my life just by being here and being in your presence. Did you hear what he said? The beautiful love that I felt when I came here. See, that's the spirit I want to, for, you know, to rest and to fall on our house. I want there to be beautiful love here. Um, amen? Amen. So we're going to call our children because we want to bless them with beautiful love. <laughs> We want to pray for them. We want to love on them. Love the children. Here's, here's another thing. Here, and here's another thing. Pray for our children. Because our children are surrounded by the wolves. They're surrounded by wolves. And we need to be praying, not just for your children, but for our children. Pray against. And just like Tracy's going to pray right now, we need to keep our children in prayer and surrounded in prayer. Amen. Psalm 127.3 says, children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Lord God, we praise you that you are fully in control of all things. As the worship team sang today, the name of the Lord is their stronghold, their hiding place. It goes before them and comes behind them. I thank you that we can trust you for the future of the children and of their families and that you will always be by their side. I pray you would protect them, keep them healthy, and help them to thrive. I thank you that you know every hair on their head. You know exactly when they arise and when they fall. Watch over them in every area of their lives and keep them safe. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hello again, church. <laughs> so as most of you know, we do have a ministry called Embrace Grace, and I am so happy to announce that we have a baby shower coming up. The baby shower will be on April 6th at 2 p.m., but we need the help of the house. We have four registries for these women that are on Amazon, and if you would all chip in, it would be an absolute success. There's one thing to keep in mind, though. If you are if you have wanted to donate furniture, like a bassinet or a dresser, anything like that, please see Priscilla. She'll be out in the lobby after service because arrangements will be need to be made for large items of that nature. Again, I encourage you, if you have any questions, there's QR codes out in the lobby, and Priscilla will be in the lobby after service. Thank you. Thank you. Morning again, family. Morning. So in every house, in every family that has the love of God, we want to take care of each other, right? And this house has the love of God. And we want to make sure that everybody in this house is doing well. And so we have a survey that we've sent out. Some of you have already done it, but you have yet, if you have yet to do so, the QR codes are on the screen, and we ask for you to do those surveys. Our pastors desire to support you in every possible way that they can, and these are some of the ways. So these are small support groups that we would like to have for you. Very intimate, eight to 10 people, and we have topics on marriages, being single, children behavior modification, life itself, and we want to be there for you. Not just on Sundays, but Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, because we're a family. It's not only on Sundays. So we ask if you have not filled out the survey, please do so. We need to have your feedback. We want to give you what you need. The pastors don't want to assume what you need. They want to hear from you. Right, And you would like to be served based on your desires. And the Lord desires to give you the desires of your heart. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, before we uh, consecrate our offerings, um, I just want to share with you that... Um, um, our congregation, our family, 
is, has, has been obeying the word of God. You have obeyed the word that you've been hearing for the last two weeks. And some of you, I, I, I see that even some of you have been convicted about your, your giving and that you've given um, what you haven't been given. Uh, some of you have not been giving your tithes and your offerings, and I think that you're catching up. <laughs> so I thank you for that. The Lord thanks you. And let's be faithful, okay? Let us be faithful because um, we, um, this past 2023, it, it was a rough year, and um, there was a lot of needs that we needed to take care of, and we were coming up short every week. And so I think that in the last two weeks, we're trying to catch up, right, Brent? We're trying to catch up in the name of Jesus. And so I ask you to be just faithful. Remember one thing. I am not giving to the church. I am not giving to a church. I'm giving to the Lord. Okay, wait, wait. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> I am not giving to a church. Um, I am giving to Jesus. I am giving to my Lord. I am giving to... I am giving to my high priest. Remember what I taught you last Sunday? Uh, he is my high priest. He's the one that blesses me. He's the, just like the, uh, the, the, high, the, priest, the priest Melchizedek blessed Abraham. He gave him bread and he gave him wine and he blessed them. Uh, after that, Abraham exploded with blessings. Do you know that? Oh, I, I, should, I should like give you that one. I forgot. <laughs> but after that blessing, Abraham exploded with blessings, and he grew so much that uh, Abraham became a very, very, very wealthy man. Why? Not because he was a good businessman. It's because God blessed him. Hallelujah. He is the creator of heaven and earth. So uh, let's, let's all uh, pray right now because uh, we, I, need, I need God's blessing. Um. I don't need any surprise attacks of, the, of, of, of debts. I don't need any surprise attacks of bills. I need, I need God to protect us, uh, our family, from like surprise attacks, from surprise bills that we were not expecting. Amen. And so, Holy Spirit, thank you for the conviction of our hearts. We thank you because we're responding. We're responding to 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 the word, and, and thank you because when we respond to the word, there's a law that comes into play. There is a law, and so Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts today as we hear the word and as we're faithful with our tithes and on our offerings in the name of Jesus, and everyone said amen. All right, listen, before I read the passage from, um, from today's teaching, I'm just going to warn you. I'm going to warn you that this passage that I'm about to, to teach on, this passage has been misunderstood, misapplied, misread, misacted on. It, it's been a, a, a real difficult time with this passage of Scripture. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to read this Scripture, and I'm going to try to unpack it for you. But I'm going to tell you what it really says, not with some television preacher says what some uh, other ministers are saying about this scripture. Amen? So I, did, I, did I warn you? Okay. So, so let me read this, this, this passage. Galatians chapter 6 says this. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the what? The what? The law of who? Okay. This passage has to do with the law of Christ. Okay. Whose law? The law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will be rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Are you ready? This is what's been uh, mistaught, misapplied, misexplained. Explain the wrong way. Let him who has taught the word share in all good things with him or her who teaches. Do not be deceived. There you go. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. 
But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to how many people? To all, especially to those who are of the what? Of the household of faith, especially. So let me read verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, just wait until I tell you what that word means, opportunity. Let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Now, here, here's what, what a lot of people teach on. Do not be deceived. Deceive, deceit is, is, is led, when you're led into a, an error. Do not be led into an error, and do not be led away from the truth. That's what deception means. It's when someone takes you away from the truth, and it deceives you. And then this, the, 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 Paul says, because God is not mocked. The word mock is a very funny word in the Greek. It, it means to turn your nose up. Actually, literally, it means to turn your nose up and to, like, sneer at somebody. You know, you know children do that. <laughs> children go, like that. Right? Well, young people do. You know, that means a, they sneer at something. They don't like it. They, they give you an attitude. They give you a face. And so here, here's what Paul is saying. Don't, don't be led into error. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows... The word sow means to scatter seeds everywhere. But whatever a man sows to his flesh, that he will also reap. Reap means to gather, to, to, to cut uh, the crops down uh, with a sickle uh, in, the, in, the, in the harvest season. W whatever he sows in the flesh, that he will also reap in its time. And so I put the word ouch there because that is a, that, that when I was a kid in church, they scared me with that verse of scripture. Oh, whatever you do, whatever you sow in the flesh. And so immediately when we think of sowing in the flesh, we think of sin, we think of bad behavior, we think of like all kinds of negative things. But that's not what this scripture means. Because this scripture now is talking about the law of Christ. It's talking about uh, serving one another. It's, it, 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 and so the flesh, sown in the flesh, means uh, something different. And so people get scared with this verse of Scripture. Oh, oh boy, uh, uh, I'm, 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 going have a, I'm going to have a harvest of disasters and disease and all kinds of things. No. Do you want to know what this Scripture means? Here, here's, here's what Paul says. For he... Who sows, for he who scatters to his flesh. Here's the, here's the meaning of the word flesh. He who sows in the material aspect. Okay, you're going to say, well, I'm spiritual. I don't sow into the material. Uh, okay, Let, can I be funny a, a little bit? Okay, how many of you, it's 1124, how many of you, after you leave here, you're going to have lunch? Anybody? Anybody? Guess what you're going to do? No. Well, y yes, you're going to eat. But guess what, what, what you're going to feed? What? Yeah. Can I be, like, funny about this? Because this is the only way to understand. Uh, when I feed myself, I, what, am I, what am I sowing into? Huh? Is it bad to eat? No, but I'm, I am, what I'm doing is I'm investing in my flesh. I'm investing in, my, in material things. Um, we buy things, okay? Uh, how many know that things fall apart? Amen. Your car is it probably is falling apart right now as we speak. My house falls apart. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, okay, wait, wait, should I... Uh, Ladies, forgive me, but um, our, our, our skin falls apart. That's why you put all kinds of things on your skin, hoping that it doesn't fall apart. 
<laughs> Everything falls apart. You see, when the Bible talks about sowing into the flesh, it doesn't, it doesn't mean necessarily that it's, it's, it's investing in something selfish, in something bad. No, this is life. We sow, we, we invest in our flesh. And guess what? If we, whatever I invest in the flesh, you know, you put that expensive cream on your face, guess what you're going to have to do? Next month, you're going to have to buy more of it. Um, you, you, we invest money in, in, in our automobiles and in our houses. Guess what? Things are going to fall apart. We're going to have to reinvest money. Why? Because whatever we sow into material things, and it's not necessarily bad, it will, what? It will produce, what? Corruption. Corruption means perishable. It perishes. All right? Even non-perishable foods perish. Do you notice that those cans have like an expiration date? Why? Because it perished. So, so, you know, whatever is, you think is non-perishable, yeah, well, it is going to perish. If I sow into material things, those material things are going to perish. And it, it's going to produce corruption. Corruption means it will perish. But he who sows scatters seeds, and watch this. The, your, your, our Bible says to the Spirit. The word to is not to there. It's the word into. When I scatter seeds, when I sow into the Spirit, into the Spirit, that means direction. That means like purpose. That means that, 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 that I, have, I have a direction to what I'm doing. I am sowing into I am so, that's why when we give, for example, when we serve the Lord, we are serving, we're giving something that goes into the Spirit. Wow. We're serving into the Spirit, and so th then the, the, the promise is that if I do that, I will reap what? Everlasting life. And it's not everlasting life. It's not the eternal life that we will receive. Everlasting life means that I will, I will receive because I sowed in, into the Spirit. I receive what? I receive never ceasing, never ending vitality. That's what it means. How many of you need vitality? I need vitality. On Wednesday, Wednesday, I flew all day, and I got to Mexico, to Monterrey, Mexico, and, and I ministered to like a, a huge conference. It was exhausting because everybody wants to talk to you, and everybody, then after that, everybody wants to go out to eat, and, <laughs> and people show, uh, end up eating, you know, uh, they eat until like 1 o'clock in the morning, and then you're dead, and then you got to get up the next morning at 7.30 because 9 o'clock, you know, it starts all over again, and then you think that after the conference, uh, you know, about 12, you, you can go take a nap. No, no, you got to go eat with all, all kinds of people until 2, 3. And then it starts again at 6 o'clock. And it, it's like a constant. And, and so I, I was very tired. And, and on Friday, I said, I'm going home on Friday. So, <laughs> so I went to the airport uh, at 1 o'clock, and, and they tell me, uh, sorry, everything is delayed. There's weather everywhere. Storms and tornadoes and everything. And so my flight to Dallas was like four hours late. That means that my flight to Newark, uh, I couldn't connect. So guess what I had to do? I had to go get a room and stay overnight at the airport. And then I, I had to get up at, seven at 5 o'clock in the morning to catch a 7 o'clock flight. I flew all the way to Phoenix. Not Dallas, Phoenix. And then I got there at 9.30 and my Newark flight was at 4.30 in the afternoon. I had to spend the whole day at the airport. You know, that's okay. I prepared for all this at the, when I was surrounded by kids yelling and screaming and people eating and drinking coffee. It's all right. I get into a bubble and no, nothing bothers me. So guess what we need today? We, you just lost an hour of sleep. You need an hour of you need, you need vitality. You need strength. We need life. See, they, Paul was not talking about like eternal life. Eternal life is, is it, you get it, and you don't get it by giving. You don't get it by doing anything uh, by works. You get it because of the grace of God. 
But here, he's not talking about everlasting life. He's talking about a never-ceasing, abundant vitality in life. We need that, right? You, you need that, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So here's what Paul says. Let him who has taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he will reap. Do you think he's talking about finances there? No. You know why? Because this scripture has been used by all kinds of people that are trying to manipulate people, others people, to get money out of you. And I rebuke that spirit. That is, a, that is witchcraft. Because <laughs> anything, anytime you use the word of God for carnal purposes, that's called witchcraft. Okay, do you want to know what this verse says? I'll tell you. He says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the what? The law of Christ. Okay, let me talk to you about the law of Christ. Because this whole passage, do not be mocked. God is not, you know, he's not mocked. Do not be deceived. God is not mad. Whatever a man sows, that. guess what Paul is saying? That is a law. That is called the law of Christ. It's not our opinion. It's the law of Christ. And so Paul has to write to the, to the church in, in Galatia, to the Galatians. Why? Because there were, there were teachers that were coming from Jerusalem. There were Jewish teachers that did not understand the whole gospel of grace. And, and they, were, they were telling people that they needed to be circumcised. They were telling grown men that were not Jewish. They were Gentiles. They were Greeks. They were, they were from Galatia. They were not Jewish at all. They were telling them that if they wanted to go to heaven, they needed to be circumcised. Not only that, but they needed to keep the Sabbath. Because if they, if they didn't keep the Sabbath and if they were not circumcised, they, were not, they couldn't be saved. That's not right. That is not the gospel. That is not what Jesus died for. Jesus di didn't die and said, I'm paying for your sins, and plus, you got to get circumcised, and plus, you got to keep the Sabbath. That's not the gospel. And so these men were coming into the church, and they were teaching this. And so Paul says, let me tell you about the law of Christ, not the law of Moses. Here's the law of Christ, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For, what, for by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. He taught him that. And now there were people that are com were coming around and saying, oh, no, 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 no. What Jesus did on the cross is not enough. Now you got to get this, and you got to wear this, and you got to go, you got to go pray three times a day, and you have to get, the men have to be circumcised, and, and, and the women have to cover their heads, and, and you have to do this, and you have to, and then you have to keep the Sabbath in order to be saved. I was listening to a, um, a, the uh, a theologian the other day. That is not an evangelical Christian. And, um, you know, he was saying, he was teaching a very b dangerous doctrine. He was teaching them that unless you are not under the, uh, the authority of the Bishop of Rome, uh, you know who the Bishop of Rome is? Huh? The Pope. Unless you're not under the authority of the Pope, and unless you're not baptized into the church, and unless you, you will never go to heaven. Whoa. <laughs> wow. So then what, what did Jesus do? What, what good is the cross? What good is the shedding of the blood? What good is it that, that he, he paid the price so my sins could be forgiven so that I can have free access to heaven, to eternal life? You cannot. What Paul was saying is this is the law of Christ. This is the law. You're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this. How many of you were alive 2,000 years ago? Oh, yeah. Okay. So maybe, uh, well, here's another question. How many of you were alive 2,000 years ago in, in the city of Jerusalem? 
Oh. Uh, so nobody was in Jerusalem when Jesus got crucified, right? You didn't see it. Did you experience it? Did you see it? Were you there? No. Guess what we do? We believe it by what? We believe it by faith. Faith, faith is, 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 uh, is believing and seeing something that is invisible. Faith is expecting something that is not here yet. But we have an evidence. We have a conviction that whatever we're waiting for is here. And we're waiting is whatever is not visible, invisible, it is visible. And so we believe that Jesus Christ did pay for our sins. He did stand in our place. He did die in our place. He did satisfy the Father when I couldn't satisfy the Father. He did reconcile me. Whoa. He did reconcile me to the Father. In his very own body, he brought me and the Father together, and he had a meeting, and he reconciled me. Like, he reconciled me. You know what reconciling means? Reconciling is what you do with your checkbook when you write more checks than you have money. Then when you write more checks than you, had, you don't have enough money, guess what you got to do? You got to reconcile the accounts. That means that you got to deposit some money because you have to be able to pay for the checks that you wrote. Well, my checking account with God was overdrawn, way overdrawn, and Jesus Give me the funds, whatever I needed to have my accounts reconciled with the Father. That's a gospel. Now, if I want to add to that, uh, uh, that, that, then that means that I don't trust Jesus. That means that I don't believe what Jesus did was enough. And so Paul says, this is the law of Christ. We believe in Jesus by faith. We trust Jesus alone for men. We what? We trust Jesus what? Alone for salvation. It's Jesus plus nothing. So here's what he says. Bear one another's burdens. Take burdens up and move them away from the person. <laughs> Heaviness, whatever is heavy, whatever is trouble. And so fulfill. Wow. Fulfill means to supply, to make full, to complete. When I bear somebody's burdens, I am making complete the law of Christ. When, when King's Heart Ministries, they sit down with someone and they minister to them and they pray with them. And, and sometimes it, it, it takes a long time. Session after session after session all the men and women that are ministering, guess what you're doing? You're completing <laughs> the law of Christ in that person because you're carrying their burden. You're helping them. You're blessing them. You're, you're directing them. And here's, here's the law of Christ. It's a command that produces a state approved by Jesus. It's when you do anything that Jesus told you to do, <laughs> that's the law of Christ. You see, what Paul is saying to, this, to, to, to the Galatians is, listen, if you do what the law of Moses tells you to do, but if you do what the law of Jesus tells you to do, then you're completing. You're completing. Here it is. You want to know what the law of Christ is? Here it is. John 13. A new, what? Commandment I give to you, that you love one another. One another means the person next to you. <laughs> That's what it means. That you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for a new commandment, a new law. I'm giving it to you. Here, John 15. This is my commandment. That you love, what? One another and I, 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 as I have loved you. Here's the law of Christ. We love one another. We bear one another's burdens. Here's a law. Okay? A law is a natural process in which a particular event or a particular thing, say always, always, it's not most of the time always leads to a particular result. A law is when something or someone 
<laughs> goes into a process, and then that process always, say always, always, always ends up in the same result. If you jump, if you jump out of a, your chair, you get up on your chair and you jump, guess what? You're not going up, you're coming down. You know why? Because there's something called the law of gravity. And you could be in New Jersey, you can be in Phoenix, you can be in China, you can be in France, you get on a chair and you jump, you're going down. Why? Because a law is the same principle, the same result anywhere in the universe. Anywhere in the universe. You can see stars moving around. Other, you can see small stars moving around big stars. Billions and billions of light years away from, you know why? Because there's a law. It's called the law of gravity. It works on earth. It works around the sun. It works on every galaxy. There's a law of gravity all around creation. And it works the same way. That's a law. A law is a process in which a particular event and a thing always, say always, always, always leads to a particular result. So here's the law of Christ. Let him who is taught the word share. Oh, so am I going to tell you that you have to share your, your th whatever with me? No, because the word share is not the word give. Guess what the word share is? It's the word koinonia. It means fellowship, communion, sharing, partnership, co-labor, cooperate. Guess what you're supposed to do, people? He says, am I teaching you the word? Am I teaching? Do I teach you the word on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, on whatever, on Sundays? Am I teaching you the word? Guess what the, the law of Christ says? You need to partner with him. Is that what it says? It's the way you need to have koinonia with him. Okay? Don't, know, don't bring me cakes. Don't bring me sugar. Don't, <laughs> no. Don't. It doesn't say there that you have to give money. It says that you have to partner. You have to. This is when we ask people to serve in this church, guess what we're doing? We're asking people to what? To partner with my wife and I, to partner with our elders, to partner with our leadership. You partner with us. There are men and women in this congregation that carry heavy burdens of service. They do all kinds of things, okay? They do all kinds of things. They are involved in every aspect, and, and they work hard, and they're here uh, two, three, four times a week. They're here day, night. They're serving. Guess what they're doing? They're participating. They're co-laboring. Co means next to. Laboring means working. We're co-working, co-laboring. We're partnering together. This is the law of Christ. It says, let him who is taught by the word share in all good. And good means useful. In all useful things with him who teaches. Some, you know, when, 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 when my wife and I talk to you, when our elders talk to you, you know, uh, we, we ask people to participate. We uh, ask people to give. We ask, last Sunday it was wonderful. We had a, a ministry uh, market out there, and people went up, and they signed up, and they, they, guess what they were doing? They were partnering. They were sharing in the burden. They are sharing something in common. It says this, let him who has taught the word participate, partner, uh, uh, help, co-labor, cooperate in all useful things with him who teaches. And then here's the law. What is the law? It, it's a process that it's the same everywhere. It's always the same result. Here's the law. Do not be deceived. God is not mad for whatever a man sows that he will reap. Verse 7 is part of the law of Christ. You know what he's saying? If you do this, God will not change. God will not be mad. You, when, you, when you sow into the spirit, you're going, to, you're going to reap in the spirit. If you sow into material things, you're going to, it's not that things are going to be corrupt. It's not the work, but they will perish. How many, of, how many of you know that your car is perishing and it's making all kinds of noises and, 
<laughs> you know what that means? Your car is corrupted. You see, that's a strong word, but the word means perishable. It's perishing. Yeah, your body is. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me going, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. For he who sows not to his flesh, into his flesh, who sows into material things, will, oh, out of the flesh. See how, how important those words are? You sow into, then you reap out to. You, I sow seeds into, and, and I'm going like this, but it could be any, anything material. You sow that, and then, and then you reap what? Corruption means perishable. How many of you know what inflation is? What? You know what inflation is? That's perishing. That's the concept of perishable. But he who sows into the spirit will out of the spirit. See, you sow into the spirit and you reap out of the spirit everlasting life. Everlasting means something that is not perishable. Yeah. Oh, you know. And here, here's what Jesus said. Perishable. Imperishable. Do not strain. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. And then later on, that's verse 27. Later on, that chapter, he says, I am, oh, because people say, we want the food. We want food that doesn't perish. And Jesus says, well, <laughs> uh, I am the food that doesn't perish. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Wow. That, this is the law of Christ. This is the law. That means that if I do what Jesus tells me to do, then always I'll have the same result. Always. Here. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat that it withers the grass. Its flower, its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his journey, in his pursuits, in his businesses. Why? Because, because if I put all my, my strength and my, 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 my investment in material things, those material things will perish. Can I tell you a joke? My wife doesn't like it. Oh, sorry, honey. There was this man that, man that, <laughs> man that worked his whole life, saved all his money, didn't spend it, saved it. Put it away. And then he told his wife, listen, when I die, when I die, I want you to take all my money, put it in my, in my coffin. Because I want to take my money with me. Um, and his wife says, sure, no problem. No problem. I will. And so the man dies. <laughs> Did you hear this? The man dies. And his wife can't, comes into the funeral home with a, with a shoebox. Uh, and, and before they close the coffin, he goes up, puts the shoebox right in the coffin. And then they close the coffin. And her friend says, listen, did, did you really put all his money in there? Sure, she says. I'm a good Christian woman. I promised him that I would give him all his money. What did you do? He goes, I took all his money, I deposited it in my account, and then I wrote him a check. <laughs> He, she did, right? <laughs> Why? Because that is perishable. It's not good. The, you know, the Egyptians died. You know, they, when the kings, those, those kings died, and they built these huge pyramids. And, and, and guess what they put down there? They put his body, their body, and then they put food. They put jewelry. They put, because because the, they believe that at night uh, all the dead woke up and they had a party and they drank and they ate and the, they wore the jewelry. Yeah, well, that's perishing. 
And what the law of Christ says, you sow to materials, you perish. Whatever you sow, you perish. It withers away. It falls. It perishes. First Peter says that the genuine of your faith be much more precious than what? Gold that perishes. Yeah, gold perishes. Though it is tested by fire, may be found, that gold may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. What First Peter is talking about, you will receive a crown of life, but this crown of life is made up of gold, but not perishable gold. It's imperishable gold that you get when you're constant through trials. That's a law. You're constant through trials. You're, uh, you're, you're accumulating the, a gold that doesn't perish. And that gold that doesn't perish, the trial of your faith will make up a beautiful crown when you meet Jesus face to face. 1 Corinthians 9 says, And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate, is controlled in all things. Now they do it to obtain a what? A, they, a perishable crown. But we do it because we want an imperishable crown. We compete. We serve, we do what, we, we serve in the kingdom in whatever capacity. We do it because we are, we are going, we are going to obtain, the word obtain, for those of you that are on this church, from this church, the word obtain is the word lambano. You get a hold of. You, you, you get a hold of a, 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 an imperishable crown. First Peter, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I have hope of my of resurrection. Why? Oh, I don't know. I, I never met anybody who was resurrected from the dead. All the people that died are still dead. Okay? There's only one person who died and resurrected. His name is Jesus, and because he died and he resurrected, hallelujah, I have a hope that I will have the same resurrection he did. And so he says, I am, I, I am begotten to a new and living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to, into, I am, I am put into, I'm shoved into an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Wow. This is the law of Christ. Let me go back to Galatians. Well, 1 Peter says, Having been born again, not corruptible seed, but through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, it's the word that never comes back void. This is the law of Christ. This is the law of Christ. Galatians, therefore, here's the conclusion. Let us not grow weary. The word weary is the word exhausted. Exhausted. Exhausted means when, when the spirit, whatever breath, leaves you. That's what it means. Exhausted. Let us not grow weary. Let us not grow exhausted while doing work. Good work. Because in, oh, this is wonderful. Because in due season. Say due season. Okay. This is the word kairos. Kairos. There's two words in the Bible for time. For a season. There's the word chronos, where we get the word chronology, chronometer. That's, that's time. That's calendar. That's earthly time. But then there's the word kairos, which means these are times that God specifies. These are times that God says, this is my time. This is, kairos means it's an assigned time from God. And here's what, what he says. Be, if, I, if I don't grow weary... If I don't get exhausted while doing good, while doing good work, useful work, in good season, in due season, in, in appointed times for reaping, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Wait a minute. Let me, let me finish here. Lose heart means to loose, to untie, to dissolve. You know, what, you know what this scripture means? That means that God has specific harvests for us. He has specific harvests for specific time. They're prepared. 
they're wrapped up in the little box with a, with a beautiful bow. <laughs> Shiny. It's harvest. But because we don't sow into the spirit, guess what we do? We lose, we untie, and we dissolve that harvest. That's what it means. And so I don't want to lose, untie, I don't want to dissolve any harvest. That's why I don't lose heart. I don't, I, don't, I don't serve one week, and then the next week I'm tired, and I, I don't serve. I don't give one week, and then the next week I, 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 I don't have faith, and I don't give. No, 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 no. I, 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 I don't grow weary. I am consistent. Whatever I'm doing for the Lord, I am consistent. Why? Because in due season, in a time that has been assigned by God, in a time that has been assigned by God to, to give me a harvest, then I will reap, I will reap my harvest. Now, wait, wait a minute. You know what? This is the law of Christ. Um, right now, guess what? I love strawberries. Well, you know, the problem is that you go to the supermarket and I don't know where these strawberries are coming from, but they're like yellow, green, whatever. They're not red. A strawberry is supposed to be red, but you know why they're not the right color? Because it's not what? It's not the season. So I don't know. It's, it's, there's, I don't know where these strawberries are coming from, but they're not coming from California. It's not season. Now, season is coming. Why? Guess what? Every year, it's the same season. Why? Because it's a law. Well, what, what Paul is saying is if I don't grow weary, if I keep serving, if I keep giving, if I keep bearing each, somebody else's burden, if I keep giving, if I keep sacrificing, if, if I keep being constant in the trial of my faith, th this is what he's saying. If I, keep, if I keep eating and absorbing the word of God, which is not perishable, it, it never comes back void. If I keep trusting in the word that I'm listening to, I'm hearing, absorbing. If I keep doing that, if I don't grow exhausted, then a, a due season is coming. And only God knows where the due season is coming. Only he knows. Sometimes he catches you by surprise because you know what? It's his season. It's not according to our calendar. And he, and he promises me that there's always a due season. Is a, is, a, is a assigned time for reaping. If I do, if I do that, therefore, as we have, say, opportunity. Guess what opportunity is? Kairos. <laughs> if I look for opportunities from the Lord, appointed times to serve somebody. He goes, therefore, as we have appointed times, let us do. Let us labor, do useful things to how many people? To all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Wow. Do you know that there's opportunities everywhere? There's assigned people and assigned times all around you to serve. And, 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 and the law of Christ says, if we do this, <laughs> if we don't grow exhausted and tired if we stay consistent there's a law that will come into 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 existence there's a law that will manifest because god is not mocked whatever i sow that is exactly what i will reap it doesn't have to do with money no money is a part of it but it has to do with loving each other the law of christ it has to do with serving each other I'm so, I was so glad that, that, you know, like everybody went in there and, and they were asking questions that were eating and sharing. It was great. But guess what happened Sunday? You guys went in there, right? And you guys ate the food, right? But there were people, and I will mention, but there were people that... Uh, went to the supermarket and they spent their own money to buy that those, 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 that food, and those people got up at uh, you know very early Sunday morning to cook all that food. Guess what? I expect a full 
harvest for those people because they fed, because they did something useful, right? And, and, and this is the way it works. This is the way it works. There were people that gave. There were people that helped. There were people that, that cleaned. There were people that set up the room. There are people that do all kinds of things to serve one another. And I expect because the law of Christ works anywhere to, with anyone. <laughs> it work, it's the same thing. It doesn't say it, it, the law, a law is not, oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in Australia. The law of gravity doesn't work. No, the law of gravity works everywhere. And so the law of Christ says, if you do this, then you will reap a harvest, and you will, especially when you give, when you serve all, but especially to those who are in the household of faith. Listen, we have an opportunity every, every week. We have an opportunity. We, we have an opportunity to sow unperishable things into the house of the Lord, into the household of faith, because we know that there's a, a sign time coming. I'm, I'm expecting it. I, I, I am. I'm expecting a harvest to come. I, I get a, we, my wife and I get a little bit here uh, every week, and, and we're so blessed, and our needs have been met, and, and this and that, but, but I know that there's a big one coming. <laughs> amen, honey. Say amen with me. There's, there, there's a huge harvest because, because, you know, guess what? I was in, uh, in uh, the conference uh, uh, Thursday night, and, uh, and the, the brother that was speaking, he looked at me, and he says, I have a word pub publicly. I have a word for you. And what? And here was the word, because you've so much, and you haven't seen the harvest that is coming to you. Be, be ready, because the harvest is coming to you. Wait, 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 wait. Guess what? That was Thursday night, Friday morning. <laughs> Friday morning, this little humble pastor from, from a, a, a small town in Mexico, he comes up to me, he goes like, with his little phone, and he goes like, these are the scriptures that God gave me for you. And he wrote me three scriptures. And guess what they had to do? Had to do with what? With a blessing, with a harvest that was coming, was coming because you've been faithful, because you've sown, because you've, you know, that. I, I received three. I was like, oh, wow, this thing, it doesn't leave me. It follows me everywhere, even in Mexico. Oh. It's a law. And it's like, listen, people, listen. God is reminding. And you, when God reminds my wife and I about something, it's not for us. It's for the whole congregation. It's for the whole congregation. Because that's the way it works. He gives the promise and the word. To, to the ones that teach you the word, and then all of, all of you that are under the teaching of the word, you, the, the promise is to all of us. Here's, <laughs> and we don't serve because, because God will bring a, will, will, will give us a harvest. That's not what we serve. But guess what? There's a law. It's called the law of Christ. The law of Christ. And, 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 and Paul, now, now you, you, you'll understand the scripture. Here's the law of Christ. Whatever you sow, the same you will reap. If you sow corruption, it'll go to the garbage. You'll have to change it. It'll fall apart. <laughs> but if you sow into the Spirit, and what is sown into the Spirit? It's only one law, one commandment I give to you. Love one another, serve one another, support one another, bear each other's burdens, do it one, two, uh, that's the law of Christ. And if we do that, that, is mean, that means sowing in the Spirit, then I will have a harvest in, out of the Spirit. Out of the Spirit. Out of the Spirit. Uh, <laughs> listen, guys, this is funny, but, you know, I, I went away and I, I had to spend an extra day, and, and I usually leave my car parked at the airport, because I come in late at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want anybody to pick me up. I have a car, and I can, you know, guess what? An added blessing. So I go there to pick up my car, and the bus drops me off. I get into my car, and I'm driving up to, like, I'm driving to the what? The, the, the Easy Pass scanner. Yeah, it's, it's 20 bucks a day. I was there for, for four, five almost. So I noticed that everything is dark. 
and I noticed that the thing is up. I didn't pay a cent for it. <laughs> Over a hundred bucks, I didn't pay a cent. I mean, I'm, I, it's not that I'm cheap, I, you know, but here I said, oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hey, listen, the state of New Jersey has plenty of money. They don't need my hundred dollars. Amen. Come on, let's all stand. <laughs> um, this is the law of Christ that's why we can stand here and we can say this to you we can open up the scriptures and we can say listen if you don't grow weary if you don't grow exhausted if you continue to do the same same every week in and every week out, if you keep doing it, and if you keep consistent, and if you're constant in whatever you're, you're, you're participating, in whatever you're partnering with us. Right now, we need to partner. You need to partner with me. Why? Because we have a couple of ministries where we're going to need resources to fund it. We're going to need resources to, 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 to invest in it. We, we, need, we, need, we need to invest in our youth. And we need to, we need to have people that are not just volunteers. We thank God for, the, for, for Sandy who's volunteered and who sacrificed. But we need, we need something. And Sandy was the one that said, listen, Pastor, we need help. We need somebody to be here all the time because we need to take care of, of, of our young people. We need, to, we need to do things for our children. We need to do more things for our missions. For our missions. We need to expand the work. And, and that's why I'm asking you to partner. This is what the word says. If you share, if you partner with the one that teaches you the word, then a law will come into work. You, that's sowing in, into the spirit. And if you sow into the spirit, you will see a reward in the spirit. It will not cor be corrupted. It will not perish. Whatever you're sowing into the spirit, it will not be touched by inflation. It will not be touched by by anything that perishes it will not rot away it will be there and some of us that have children and grandchildren we need that we need that guess what we need parents you want to know what you need right now you need wisdom think about it I was thinking what do our parents need I thank God for the King's Heart that they're doing that, that uh, 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 survey. You know why? Because they want to know what your needs are. You know what? They want to know what your needs are because they want to supply help. So take that survey. It's only three, four questions, right? Marcia? Three, qu three questions. Three questions. Do you need help in finances? Do you need help in your, in your marriage? Do you need help with your children? Um, and, and then guess what? The ministry will take all those answers and they will come up with, with, with help. This is what we do. This is how we, we carry each other's burdens. And I'm sure that there will be a huge harvest for them. I'm telling you, there will be a huge harvest for them in their due season. Thank God. And you too. Listen, uh, I, I, I'm not a, I repented already two weeks ago. <laughs> I repented. I said, I'm sorry for not telling you this before. I'm sorry for, I thought I was being kind. And I thought, you know, I, I, <laughs> last Sunday there was like unity service. And we had more people than ever. And I had to talk about tithes and offerings. And I'm, I, you know what my head was thinking, right? Oh, my God. All these visitors. What are they going to think? I know, Karen. I know. I know. Uh, what are they going to think? That we're talking, you know, we're, we're not talking about money. We're talking about serving Jesus. We're doing, we're doing, we're, we're talking about now, today I'm putting a title. This is the law of Christ. This is the law of Christ. Whatever you sow exactly is exactly what you will reap. Amen and amen. You sow into the spirit, you, 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 you gather, you reap into the spirit, and, and you sow into material things. Amen. Yes, honey, come on. Yes. <laughs> is that working no guys is that working Luis yeah, yeah. so sometimes come, come I, I cringe a little bit oh. because 
I am more on the side of, oh, come on, let's get together here. <laughs> I am more on the side of what the Bible is telling you is to give. I'm sorry, but it is give your money, okay? And it's not because we're um, needy or it's because uh, we want to put pressure on you. It's none of those things, but it's because we know how powerful the blessing is that will fall on your life. And I'm telling you, I have lived this my entire life. Yeah. Like since I was an infant, my father was sick. My mother like could barely give birth to me. I should have died. You know, I should have died. My mom should have died. Right. The whole story that the doctor said. But, but, but my father and mother constantly gave to the house of the Lord and gave, you've heard this before. They gave. They gave money, money, okay? No, 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 so, wait a minute, on work. Oh, yeah. They built buildings. And... Yeah, like all kinds of things they gave financially. And so I'm just up here to say, God is in it. God is in the money. God is in the money. He knows that this house needs to do more ministry, like Pastor just said. And so I'm just praying a release over you today to give your first your tithes, the 10%, that is like the minimum. That's the minimum. But I know that there are people in this house that God is releasing you. He's releasing money out of your hands. And it's not because I want it at Kingsgate. I'm not asking you to do that. There are projects and there are things and there are ministries in this house that you need to get involved in, like Embrace Grace. That program needs money, okay? So I release you to sow your money into the house of the Lord and into the kingdom of God, wherever it may be. You may need to sponsor a, a, a missionary. You may need to sponsor um, some other ministry. I'm not selfish. Like, I want to spread all of it around. But I do know, I hear the Lord saying that it is also, it's also about money. And so be released to give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Now listen. Yeah, some of you already know. Some of you already know. If you're not, if you don't understand this, let me pray. Because this is not something that you understand with your mind. This is something you receive in your heart. Jesus said, you know what? Where, you, where, where, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. That's where your heart is. And so I don't want my heart to be in material things. I, I don't. Um, I told you last Sunday, I don't know if my wife was here, but I told you my, last Sunday that the reason why I met my wife is because my father-in-law gave and supported my college, my Bible school professor who taught me and who discipled me. I didn't know. My wife showed, showed up in, my, in, in our Bible school my senior year. I had been at the teaching under this professor for three years. I didn't know that my father-in-law put him there. And so all of a sudden, my wife shows up. My last year, and my wife goes like, oh, that's Bernie. I go like, what? That's not Bernie. That's Professor Rossier. No, that's Bernie. That's my, my, my family friend. My father played pool with him all the time. I went like, what? That's Dr. Rossier. And guess what? Because of my, fa my, my father's giving, supporting that man that came to my Bible school and discipled me for, for four years, for all the years that I was there, I met my wife. And because I met my wife, my three kids were born and my grandkids were born. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. This is the way it works. That's a harvest. So Holy Spirit, I, I'm, I'm being faithful to, to speak to what you reveal in Scripture. Thank you, Lord, because you never fail. Your law does not change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for these laws. Thank you for this law. You will not be mocked. You will not be mocked. But we want to honor you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Listen, 
Uh, uh, do we have a prayer team? Yes. Come up. Come on. Prayer team. Guess what we're going to pray for? Today, we're going to pray for financial needs. So if, if any one of you are struggling with your finances, I, 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 I want you to come up and get prayer from our prayer ministers. Because God will supply. If you have a financial need, invest. Because then you open up the windows of heaven. That's what the Bible says. Prove me in this if I don't open the windows of heaven. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Father, thank you for your word, for your light, for your direction. I pray that you, we would live this word to the full extent of the, of the power of the word. In the name of Jesus, release the harvest. Release the harvest in due season. Amen and amen. God bless you, everybody. I will see you. Listen, Wednesday nights we have discipleship at 7.30 in English. Friday night at 7, 30, 7 o'clock in Spanish. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next Sunday at 10 o'clock. God bless you. With beauty and splendor How much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you if he washes over every sparrow? How much more will he? How much more will he clothe you if he watches over? Dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor. How much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you if he watches over every sparrow? Oh